Hey everybody, it's me, Marco from Analog Things, and today I want to show you the Polaroid Type 100 camera. First off, I want to talk about the current state of Type 100 film, or as it otherwise called, pack film. So currently, the film is a dead end. There is no company producing it anymore and it doesn't look like there is anybody picking up the, the, um, the machines and re start reproducing the film. So in spring 2017, so this year if you're watching, still in 2017, Fuji announced that it will discontinue their last film production of pack film which was the Fuji FB100C. So that was the last color film produced by Fuji and it's, it's gone. I mean you can still buy it. So if you really want to get into Polaroid Type 100 film, get yourself some packs now. The price is still reasonable. It all, like went crazily up in the last year, as you could imagine, if somebody calls like discontinuing the last possible film. But that's the last chance to get Polaroid Type 100 or like Fuji Type 100 film, pack film. Why do I do this video now? Well, um, I really love Type 100 film. So I got like a lot of stock left and that's Polaroid Type 100. 125i that's still working that's one of the last productions they were made that's a really old film i mean you can hear it wait so that's the chemistry in the film it's dead that's just like decoration that's nothing else but yeah that film expired in as you can see april of 1993 well that's way over its time but if you're interested in that video let me know below and I will do a lot of videos about different types of film. I, have, I still got a lot of in stock. Okay, so that's the bad news. The good news is you could still buy that Type 100 film, get some uh, on, on some resellers. If you want to buy original Polaroid film, find some sellers that are trustworthy on eBay or somewhere else, because that film needs to be stored in really good conditions to be still usable. Most films I got and they were stored pretty good are starting to dry out on me. So I, I have the pressure of doing some projects now because the film is dying on me. Well, but as bad as the news are, let's take a look at the camera and maybe you get one. So there's different types of Type 100 cameras. This one is the 180. That's one of the professional series. There's a few of these series, the 180, 185, 190 and 195. These are cameras with a manual aperture and timer, so they don't need any batteries or anything and they have a good lens and they work great. That's my favorite camera, that's the 180, and cool camera. On the other hand, we have the automatic cameras. Type 100, Type 200, also like all the series from 100, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then there's 5, I don't know. Um, then we have 200 series all through 300 and 400 series. These are all automatic cameras, and they also work really good. And for light exposure, they need a battery. The battery is stored in the back here. So in the, so in the back of the camera, um, we have this battery case. The problem is the battery they used in the original camera isn't available anymore. So if you really want to use one of the automatic cameras, you need to get one of the old batteries, which are really expensive, or you change that battery pack to modern batteries. If you like a video about that, please drop me a line below. There's a lot of tutorials how to do it online, um, and it's not that hard, and I could do a video about it if you want to. So that's the problem with the automatic cameras. They need a battery to be to be working. Otherwise, they are really cool. I have a 320 over somewhere uh, in my storage that I really loved. Um, they also have a little bit higher aperture. They start at f8, and the manual one starts at f4.5. Or yeah, this one starts yeah 4.5. This one, and I think the 185 even starts at 3.8. So they are a little bit better when it comes to a patcher. Okay, let's take a look. Like you will find this camera somewhere lying around. That's how it comes. Closed with a little front part and the back and everything. So how to open the camera? Um, there's just this lid. You just have to pull it up and pull it over the camera. And then what I normally do is like as soon as I have the camera open, I just put it away, uh, take the camera, flip up, the viewfinder, that's actually most on most cameras, that's a flip up viewfinder. Uh, some have it fixed on top, but most cameras you can flip it up. Then you have the camera, but it's still 
pretty flat, so you want to open that bellow. Um, to open it, there's this level, on, like on the right side and left side, you have these two little sinks. So to open it, we just push the right side up, Ooh, and you see the camera comes out. Then I squeeze it in, and then you hear it locking into place. So now I can pull it back, and it's locked into place, and the camera is ready to shoot. To close it down again, it says here on the top, press to close. So we just press down here and squeeze on the front and we can just like squeeze it and it's closed. That's easy. A pretty great camera and I really love it and it's great to work with. So what does this manual version have? I will only explain the manual one, the uh, automatic one is a little different but if we continue this Type 100 series I will explain the automatic one too when I do the battery exchange. So a few things about the camera that we have to see here. On the front side here that's actually actually to charge the shutter so you really have to squeeze it down then it's loose and snaps back so now we can take a picture actually on top here there's the shutter so to focus you pull right and left with these two things on the on the top it's pretty easy so left right to focus that's cool um, in the viewfinder there's two different kinds of viewfinders rangefinders some have the focusing combined in the viewfinder so you have two images laying over each other and you need to line them up. Others have a separated, they have a viewfinder and a rangefinder for focusing specially. But this one everything is combined in one viewfinder and it's pretty bright so it works great. What else do we have here on the camera? On the front here we have the settings for the aperture and the time. So it goes from 500 of a second to bulb or one second and the aperture goes from 4.5 to 90 which is amazing <laughs> uh, yeah well I I think I used it once with my broncolor to shoot on on a Petro 90 but that's yeah that's not like that's a pinhole a pinhole camera actually so easy as that that's the camera on the side here you even got a, a little opening to put in a cable release if you have one and on the bottom we have a PC sync so the PC sync is combined with two these things on the side here, which show you M, X and V. The M is for medium delay, so if you're shooting with flash, uh, it takes a medium delay. If the flash burns, that's a little complicated, but that's flash sync. X means it releases the shutter as soon as the uh, shutter is completely open. And V is actually German, which means Vorlauf, and means that this is a self-timer actually. So these are the three switches you can change easily. That's it with the camera functions. So now where do we load the film and where's the film? So in the back here, there's two sides. So on the left side, we have just a little case. That's actually where the automatic one had the battery. But on this one, there's nothing in there. So you could store some stuff in there um, before they used it for the coding, for the film, but you don't need that anymore. So on the other side, we got the film. So here it's the film loader. And if you take a look here on the bottom, there's a little switch. So as soon as I put this switch over, the back opens and you can exchange the film. I've currently loaded a black and white film, uh, which I loaded at the video before that wasn't recorded on my nice camera. So um, unfortunately I'm not loading any film now, but you can just open it like this and close it again. There shouldn't be any exposure because the image is lying really flat on the front. So these are pack films. They don't have battery inside, they just have sheets. So this black thing here is the dark slide. That's actually one of the 667 of this one here, which are expired by a really long time. But just to show you how it looks like. So they got the dark slide that's on front here and you just pull it out when it's in the camera and then you're ready to shoot. And then you have these little lashes where you pull out each of the different sheets. How does it work and why is it called pack film? Well, pack film because it's in one pack and it's 10 shots. How does it work? The film is called peel apart film. It's, the technique is it, you pull out the image and it squeezes the negative and a like, positive layer on top. And while you do that, the rollers will spread the chemistry all over the film and give you a nice even look and the negative develops and then develops into the positive. The development time is between 15 seconds and one, one and a half minutes, depending on film and temperature. As soon as the film is developed, you just peel the two images apart. And then you got a positive side, like this here. That's a double exposure actually. And a negative, which I don't have here now. 
is actually to shake it like a port picture. Well, it comes from Type 100 film. Type 100 film, you can shake because this one, when you separate it, it's still wet from the chemistry and you shake the image to dry it. That's why it's called shake it like a Polaroid picture. Type 100 film, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Woohoo, we got it. So there's also a special technique which you could use and that's a transfer. Um, and the transfer doesn't only work with a few films. Uh, it luckily works with Fuji FP100C that you could still buy. And you can do a transfer on paper, which is like this here. So it gives a nice structure and I really like the, the look of, of, a, of a transfer. It has a lot of mistakes in there. Um, it's a really cool technique, it doesn't take a lot, it's just paper, some PVC rollers and timing, really good timing. Okay, and how can you work with this technique? Well, you could also work a little bit and I did one transfer onto bamboo. Don't wonder about the structure, that's just some structure I took for a test and it works really cool and you can make nice effects with the bamboo and wood. That's Type 100 film. It was, or it is, one of my favorite formats. I really like the form factor and everything. Um, I like what you can do with it. You can even do a lift with the 669 or a few different versions of Polaroid. But unfortunately, it's discontinued and I don't think there's anybody able to buy the machinery from Fuji to produce the film again. Bad luck if Polaroid Originals or anybody else doesn't start producing pack film again. We're out of luck and these cameras here, they are just decoration in a few years. I used them a few times to shoot wet plate, but that's also like just a, a well, it's kind of sad to shoot wet plate with a Polaroid camera, even if it's also an instant photography process in my opinion. Well, that's it to Polaroid Type 100. If you want to have more detailed reviews or information, let me know. If you liked the video, um, give me a like. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. I'm really happy to answer them. And if you want to see more content, subscribe to my channel and I will be happy to produce more stuff for you. Okay, see you next time. Bye.